Alright guys, my name's Chris and welcome to another gear review. Right, got quite an important bit of safety kit to do for you today. A bit of head protection. Now, there's a lot of uh, people at Airsoft that think, well, why would you bother wearing a helmet? There's no point. Well, let's be honest guys, the most important piece of protection you've got when you're Airsoft in is is these your your eye probe. You know you wouldn't you wouldn't go into a game with with your eyeballs unprotected because it's gonna get shot out. Now it's gonna depend where you're playing. I don't always wear a helmet because it's not always required. It, you know this is fairly unlikely if you're in a wide open woodland that you're actually gonna hit your head. But if you're playing at an urban site, if you're going in and out of buildings, ducking through windows and climbing through and go leaping through small doorways, anything, ladders, anything at all, or there's hard surfaces around, you know, there's that potential to bump your head. Now, if you fall over and hit your arm or your back or whatever, it's probably going to be all right. But you hit your skull on a hard edge, corner, a curb, just flat down on the road, you're in trouble. Now, a helmet is going to, or your protection, that even a cheap bit of clone gear like this in this particular case I mean they vary some of them are thin plastic and they aren't going to really do you any good this actual particular piece is pretty thick plastic and it's got not bad um, pad system on the inside so it's quite comfy and it's actually going to do that protection job now as, uh, as you can see before it interfaces with my eye protection pretty well so I've got no worries here if you're going to be wearing uh, a mesh lower face mask, they're pretty popular, you shouldn't have a problem with that. Now, as, of course, as some of you will probably have already realised, this, uh, this is a clone of the Pry airframe helmet. It's, it's come out fairly recently, it's the only clone around that I know of. And it's, it's pretty good overall, you can have a look at a few features of it. It fits me well, um, I wear a 58 centimetre beret, headwear, etc. And that's about the biggest you can go with this. Uh, as far as I know, they don't make any other sizes yet. So you're left, uh, if you do wear a 59 or a 60 centimetre, then hard luck for, for the moment. Um, you know, there's not a lot of adjustability, obviously, in a solid helmet. You can undo some of the screws on the sides here and change it a little bit, but there isn't a lot of flexibility here, so bear that in mind if we purchase one. So yeah, as I mentioned, only recently released. Pretty good impressions so far. Let's have a closing look at some of the features. Okay, so as I mentioned, clone of the Cry Airframe helmet. First clone that's been made as far as I know. And uh, so we're gonna get a bit closer in on some of the, some of the actual features here. And uh, probably best to start off with the actual main shell itself. Now, one of the most prominent features of the shell of the helmet is probably this area here. It's a two-piece design. Now, with the real thing, this gives you various advantages in terms of absorption of the ballistic forces if you actually take a hit from a round or from some shrapnel. It, you know, it's all designed to help minimize the trauma to the actual wearer's head when it does take a hit. But also, a side benefit, and one of the big pluses, is it allows airflow through here. Basically it's going to keep your head a lot cooler when the temperature is really rising. A couple of minor details that distract, you can see this point here, and you've got this bit here where you can see where it's been moulded, probably injection moulded plastic. It does look a bit off, but then if you just get the, uh, the cry helmet cover for it, that's going to cover it up. It comes pre-drilled with three holes here for the optical night vision mount. It's all held together pretty solidly. As I mentioned before, it, it it is from, again, going back to that safety aspect, it is really tough um, and the pads are good. So from that point of protecting your head, should you fall over or take a hit on a, you know, someone else's rifle or you fall off a, a ledge or you know, trip over, hit a curb or something, I think this is gonna, it might not necessarily survive the hit but I think your head will survive and that's the main thing and it's you know it's not a it's not a, an expensive bit of gear either it's you know these are around 30 40 pounds online 
Whereas if I was to try and get a real one of these in the UK, I'm looking at well over £700 plus something like £125 uh, charge at level peaks for the administrative fee, seeing as the real one is restricted uh, under the ITAR regulations in the US. So for £40 is quite a big difference to nearly £900, I mean pushing towards a grand for the real thing, and I don't need ballistic protection, so this does just fine. So yeah, that's the shell, all good, held together quite firmly, good replica of the real thing, a few minor aesthetic blemishes, but that's no big deal. Arc rails, unfortunately I don't actually have any accessories to test on these, but the, the plastic doesn't exactly fill me with joy, it's alright. I can't, unfortunately, as I say, comment on the specs of the 20mm rails. They look close enough, I think. Um, I reckon if you really want to upgrade this, you're going to be able to just take these screws out and put the real things on there, which is always nice. And it does give you that facility you can put, say, a contour head cam on one side, put a light on the other. You've got these uh, points here. Whether this will fit the ear covers and the chops, I don't know. Hard to say. I'm not exactly sure how that's meant. I think they are something to do with the rails in this area here. So, depending on the specs that these rails are built to compared to the real thing, is where we'll decide whether that stuff is going to fit. Bungees here. These are just for retaining night vision devices if you were to have any. Obviously, I don't at the moment, I don't have the mount. It's probably not going to be a worry for airsoft, but at least they've put them on. They're all right quality. You know, if, if you are going to be using any night vision, you're probably not going to be using this helmet anyway, so I'm not going to worry about that too much. Moving on to the inside. Now, a couple of these pads had fallen off when it uh, originally arrived in the packet. Now, it wasn't actually to do with the Velcro that attaches them. It was... Um, the glue, as you can see here, when I've tried to take that pad off, instead of it, the pad coming away from the Velcro, the glue's just come away from the helmet. So it's not very easy to rearrange the layout of these of these pads to suit your head shape better because of that glue being rather weak and just a bit low quality. But the pads themselves, they're they're a good, a decent thickness. The material of them, they're they're quite comfortable. I mean, overall, you know, for a, a, a cheap helmet, not bad at all, not bad at all. Suspension system, very, very important. Straps themselves, it's quite a decent webbing, I have to say. It's smooth, it's not going to sort of itch and cause you discomfort. The sort of leathery stuff, I'm not exactly sure what it is, you've got it all inside the actual chin cup area here and on the, the uh, nape of the neck pad. Now this obviously, this um, as you guys will know, who know about the real thing, this suspension system, it's a clone of the OptiCore H8 as the real thing uses. And they've done a pretty good job of copying it overall. I mean, for airsoft, I'd say perfectly adequate, more than adequate, really. So yeah, good, solid, comfortable straps. Stitching, I mean, if you actually look there, that's a lot of stitching around you know, these points. I've done a lot of stitching to it, and for such a for a cheap clone piece of gear, I'm impressed with that. I'm impressed indeed. The bolts that mount the straps themselves got pretty solid. I mean, they do the job. Not much can say about that. The plastic hardware. Again, I'm I'm rather pleasantly surprised by the the plastic. It's I mean, for some reason they've, they've actually gone to all the effort of cloning the bloody trademarks on the plastic thing. I don't know, don't want to bother with that, but I guess some airsoft players are going to worry about it. And plastic itself, normally with these Chinese brands, it's really brittle and just rubs you plastic, but this stuff isn't too bad. It's not exactly, you know, ITW, but it's not bad at all. This, the main clip here, it works. It's good and solid. It's not going to come undone by accident. You know, it, it's in there when, you, when you're actually wearing the helmet. Uh, 
it's easy to, it's easy to secure and unsecure. Um, I have one thing I really do like is these these sliders here, the adjustment sliders. They, when you set them, they stay in place where you set them, and when you move them again, they just stay there and they take up the excess strap. Now, as those of you who are familiar with the standard issue British helmets. Um, and I believe the older style American, all the Mitch helmets, the suspension system, standard issue ones. When you adjust those sliders up and down, you end up with a, an extra bit of strap just hanging down there, and you get a little bungee, and you have to try and tighten it up and roll it. Personally, I find with my issue Mark Six that the Royal Air Force decided to kindly give me, I always have. Uh, I always find it a bit tricky trying to really secure those extra bits in place. This design just eliminates that problem entirely because of the way it just loops round back on itself like that. The pad here on the back of the neck works well. As I mentioned, this sort of leathery, sort of raw leather, that I'm presuming it's not going to be actually off a cow. This will be some synthetic material, but it isn't uncomfortable at all. Again, with the stitching, a bit more of a close up there. If you look at these areas, there's that's a lot of double, triple, etc. stitching. They've reinforced it, and it's good to see plastic hardware and the loops here, it's all solid. So, yeah, I can't really, for the price, can't really fault this helmet. It's a faithful replica of the original, it's comfortable, the suspension system is good, it's secure, it sits solidly on your head. You've got a cooling feature there, which is going to be a lot better. You know, this model is going to keep you a lot cooler during the summer months compared to some of the other just one-piece replicas out there. The price is good. I mean, yeah, if I've, I've tried a couple other replica airsoft helmets, helmets for airsoft before now, and they've they've not exactly thrilled me. But this, I'm I'm very happy with, and I see myself using this quite a lot. Very good, and a lot of lot of uh, potential for upgrading it as well. You can get the, the, the cry cover will go on there. Put the real arc rails on. I've no doubt you could replace the suspension with the proper ops core. You know the real thing, the proper ops core system. And yeah, the shell, the plastic's good. It's thick. I mean, there's a lot of replicas of the ops core helmets themselves are fast and the base jump and all that stuff fast carbon not all the ballistic i don't believe but yeah there's replicas of a lot of the other ops core helmets and from what i've read they're really really thin plastic this there's not much you can't really flex this at all to be honest it is very solid and put together solidly as well good quality control so yeah there we go that is the tmc clone of the cry airframe helmet highly recommended and i'll see you next time